Good morning. I was loud. I'm never loud. <laughs> Welcome to Jam Sunday. Well, we are so glad to see all of these families, all of our Jam kids, all of our church kids. How glorious does it get? Not much more than this. Um, we're going to worship a little differently, just a little differently than we normally do. We're going to do Jam worship today. So you can see how these kids love worship. We always say, that, well, welcome to God's house. Well, we, always, we call this God's house, but this is our house of worship. The jam kids know that God's house is everywhere. It is everywhere. And we say that his house, his love is like a house. It's like a big, big house. It has a roof. He shelters us. He protects us from whatever is out there. It has walls, walls that keep us safe was close in and keep his love surrounding us. And it has a floor, a foundation, a firm foundation that we can stand on. Even when we don't feel strong, it is still right under our feet. That's what God's house is. So we are about to worship. Kids, if you want to come up and sing, you are welcome to come up and sing songs with the band. We're singing all the songs that you know. If not, just sing out where you're sitting. Those are your sacred places. Anyway, so that's all good too. So this is how we begin our worship. Are y'all ready? We worship God because... Yes, she 
did something else on Sunday that we don't get out to do. You'll see that in just a minute. All right? Just a few announcements to go through. We had our youth conference meeting tonight. And we were singing. We were singing. Good job. Good job, buddy. So we have our youth mentor group tonight. That's for 6 through 8. And if you are a mentor, 6 through 9. But if you're a mentor, one of those kids will be here at 5. We'll start with a supper, have some fellowship, and again, bring a Nerf gun. Mentors and mentees, bring your biggest Nerf gun. All right. Room crew in the morning from 8 to 10. Y'all, we had our younger conference group last Sunday. Let me just back up. Y'all should have seen those adults. They had more fun than the kids. And there were certain people that shocked me more than kids, Mr. Allen. So let's get to that. All right. Room crew in the morning, 8 to 10. That's our free community breakfast. Come grab it to go. Call it in to go. However you want to do or Come to eat. Book. Fellowship with other folks. So this Tuesday and Thursday is our last week of jam for the year. I know, oh, it is so sad. Okay, you should look at that. Our last week, but we go through May, so y'all have time for your testing, and you can get to bed early and study, and for those that have field trips and all that kind of stuff, that's why we don't do May, okay? All right, so this week is our last week for that. We do have our lunch today. Everyone here is welcome to stay. Plenty, plenty, plenty of food, so everyone stay. Can't stay, grab a plate to go. Our celebrate friendship has their lunch on Friday, so check in with Joyce Deaky if you have not RSVP for that. And then we start our new Bible study, Luke, on Wednesday night, 6 o'clock. Dinner and child care provided, and we're done by 7.30. This is a new study we're doing. We also have a community meal, drive through or eat in, Sunday, May the 7th, after our 10.30 service. All right, we're going to play change for change a little bit, but I have to tell you all a story first. So we're going to hear today about four friends. First of all, here in sermon, y'all are going to tell me, y'all are going to answer me about some of the things. Come on, my hand, buddy. He was up this morning at 7. He's okay. All right. So y'all are going to tell me here in service, y'all are going to answer some of the things we've learned about, okay? But also, I'm going to tell y'all a story y'all haven't heard that we didn't get to do here in Chan. That's the last story I'm going to get to tell y'all. And it's about four friends. Can y'all look around and see a friend sitting up here? Everybody have a friend up here? Would you do anything for that friend to help them? Yes? So there were four friends in the Bible that they had a, a friend who could not walk. Do you want to be my person? Can you lay on the floor and act like you can't walk? Yeah. There you go. Sit on the floor. Sit on the floor. Act like you can't walk. Say, I can't walk. I can't walk. Okay? So these friends said, we've got to get him help. His whole life from the time he was little bitty, he couldn't walk. And so you know what they did? He would lay on a mat. <laughs> he would lay on a mat. And this is what they did. One friend got in this corner, uh, one friend got in this corner, one friend got in that corner, and they all picked up the map, and they went to find Jesus. You can't walk yet. Sit down. There you go. So they went to find Jesus because they knew and trusted that only Jesus could help them. They had heard that Jesus had healed people. Y'all remember people we talked about being healed? Yeah. Who was somebody Jesus healed? The blind guy. The blind guy. Who else? You forgot? That's okay. Lazarus? Well, he did the Lazarus. He raised him from the dead, didn't he? That's the ultimate healing, huh? Huh? Jesus? He did do that. You're right. One of the He's done so many healings, and he still heals today. Amen? So, the four friends wanted to get him to Jesus. Well, they went to the house. It was so crowded, they couldn't get in. I mean, like, they couldn't get through the doors. There were so many people surrounding the house, peeking in the window, being nosy, looking in to see what Jesus was doing. So they crawl up on the roof, and they tear a hole in the roof. Whether it was made of straw or hay or whatever it was made of, they tore a hole in the mud and all that, and they looked down, and they tied a rope to this end, and a rope to this end, and a rope to this end, and a rope to this end. You know what they did? They got the mat, and they picked their friend up by those four ropes, and then they lowered him to the ceiling. You dropped him in like that. And Jesus saw him and said, you know what? Because of the faith. Of your friends, you are healed. Rise and walk. So he rose and he walked. Now you can walk. Yay! So let me tell you something. Are you listening? Who your friends are matters. You want good friends. You want friends that will pray for you. You want friends that will pray with you. If you're having a bad day at school, you want somebody to come up and say, hey, don't forget, Jesus loves you. Right? And in turn, you want to be that friend. Do you know Boone, his teacher, 
does something that's really cool. She lets them fill out cards and drop it in bags or boxes, right? And he got a card from somebody the other day that said, Boone, you are the nicest friend. You are so nice to me. I wish you were my brother. That's a good compliment. That's being a good friend, right? So that's what we have to be. We have to be a good friend. Somebody that would get us to Jesus when we need to be to Jesus, right? All right. So we're going to go collect change for change. Somebody tell me what that change for change goes for that y'all collect. Okay. To the food catering. And it's helping people here in Mart that may not have food when they need food. And if they call and say, we don't have any money to buy food, then we make sure they get to the food pantry at the Church of Christ to help get food or one of the other churches to do it. So we're going to do a quick change. I may be short on goals today. We have no goals, and I'm not sure. Okay. Yes. You're sure? Okay. Do what? Um, yes. Here you go. Okay. Okay? All right, let's bow for our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art 
you want to come back up here and sing, you can get right across the front if you want to, okay? What, buddy? Hey, go get your candy so then you can go see this camera, okay?
Kids, if y'all want to get your kids' Bible out of the pew, you can turn to page 590, 590 on the left side.
So all of these things to say, you heard the message that I talked to the kids about, about the friends and that their friends matter. And so what I want to talk to you about just very quickly is the four ropes that hold your children. And so that first rope is you. It's parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, uh, any whoever you are raising that child. And so if that is you, I want you to stand. We are grateful for you. And like I said, not just that you trust, but that you send your child. This is optional. You don't have to do this. And I know you're not doing it just for two and a half hours of free care, right? You're doing it because you want your child in church. And so you are building their foundation. And so you are that main rope. And so I want you to know we talk to your children. We talk to them about obeying you and honoring you and doing what you say and making right choices at home as well as school and church. And so we talk to all of them about those kind of things. And, and you obviously know that because you're here today. That was important to you. And so we want you to know that we pray for you and your guidance daily. We lift your families up in prayer every single day. I want you to know that. And if you ever need prayer, if you ever need us to pray over your family for something that you might be, be struggling with or hurting with or needing, please come to us and we will be your prayer warriors. We just want you to know that. The second row that holds your children up are the teachers and the school personnel. I want you to keep in mind that teachers, um, teachers have your children for more hours of the day, typically, than you see your children awake. And so I want you to know that the teachers we deal with in the school that we deal with has made JAM possible. We don't have the, the vehicles. We don't have a bus. We don't have the, the opportunity to go and leave here and go pick the children up to bring them here for JAM. So what the school did was partner with us and say, you know what? We'll provide you a bus. We'll provide a school bus that will bring the children and drop them off at JAM so they can come. And so we are so grateful for that. And so I just want you to know that the student success and the students possibility to come here is solely dependent on the school, and we are so grateful. And so I just want you to know, we pray for the school every day, but I want to call you to pray for the school every day, to pray for the administrators, to pray for the board, to pray for the teachers, to pray for the cafeteria workers and the custodians and the people that work in the office. Every single one of them has something to do with your child's education. And so I want you to be sure to pray over those school, school employees every single day. That third rope is the one that is their friends. The rope that holds that, that third part of the mat, the kids and the friends that your, your kiddos are with every single day. Um, in a world where it gets kind of tough sometimes and kids are not always polite, kids like adults are not always kind. They have bad days and good days. Sometimes words spurt out that they don't mean to say. Sometimes things happen and sometimes we all know. Sometimes it's intentional. We know that. But the friends that your children have are what matters. But what we work on at JAM is not just the friends that you have, but being a friend that someone needs or being a friend that someone else might need to have. And so we encourage kids. We talk to them about bullying. We talk to them about the words that they said. We talk to them about being kind. And if you've ever had a child, I hope not, but if you've ever had a child that maybe acted out at JAM, we give them the option to straighten up. And then sometimes we say it might be best that you go home and think about this today. And the kid will just start crying. Don't send me home. Don't send me home. Please don't send me home. I don't think it's because any parent here is just overzealous in their discipline. I think they don't want to leave jam. But what's most important is that these kids know how they are allowed to treat people. We don't allow the kids to talk ugly to each other. We don't allow name calling. We don't allow, don't allow people to step up and, and take over a, a situation. The kids know they have to be kind and they have to use kind words because that's the only way we can be in this world. We have to be the ones that make a difference in this world, right? And we have to pass that on to the kids. And so we follow that same protocol the school does. We make certain that they know to be kind no matter what. And so that's the third rope is your friends. And so I just encourage you to, to pray for your kids' friends daily. I have, um, I've, I've heard people that talk about praying for their, their kids' Uh, uh, spouses down the road when their kid before their kids are born after their kids are born on down the road pray for your children's friends pray for your children's friends down the road that they'll run across in high school and in college and in young adult life people that will build them up make them strong and hold that rope and get them to the feet of Jesus when they need to get there that's the kind of friend we all need to be the last rope is what I love to say when I baptize a child is that I believe it takes a village to raise a child but I believe it takes a church to raise a Christian and so the last rope is this church. 
And I want you to know we started JAM in 2017, and I look at some of our sixth graders this year who was in, who were in that very uh, that very first group. But we are graduating. Is it this year we graduate our first jammers or next year? This year, we graduate some of our very first jammers. The very first year, we were a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, and we did pre-K and kindergarten. That was a little cuckoo. Um, it, it was a little tough. We, some of them got love and would just come in and cry for the whole two and a half hours. Um, they, they were just too little to be all day in school and then come to jam too. And so we've changed that, pivoted a little bit over the years. But, but some of those very first kids... Those very first group in 2017 are, are, were our fifth and sixth graders, and they're graduating this year. And so that's going to be a special one for us. But I just want you to know, we love having new kids here. And I can't emphasize that enough. If there's ever a time, if you go to church somewhere else, glory be. If you go to church here, glory be. If, if, your, church, if your kid's church is coming here on Tuesday or Thursday, glory be. We love being in their church. I cannot tell you how many times I'll be downtown, and even in Waco, when I'll have a kid go, Pastor Amy! Do you have a Kleenex? <laughs> Always need Kleenex. But they believe I'm their pastor, and I'm here to say I am. I am their pastor. And so whether they go to church somewhere else, or their church here Sundays or Tuesday and Thursday, if you can't make it here on Sunday, but you want your child in church somewhere, you drop them at any of the one, two, three, four, five doors, and someone will be in here and take your child and get them to Sunday school. So if you're a member here that will take the child beside you and hold on to them for the day, stand up, please. If you're a member that will take a child at your side and get them where they need to be, there you go. See all these people? See all these people? If you need to drop your child off on Sunday morning because you need a break, bring them to Jesus. Why not, right? Bring them to church. Let them, let them come to church. Let them play. Let them have fun. And let them learn about Jesus. You know, here's the thing. So many times we forget about the goodness of God. And that's what we teach the kids more than anything. They've learned these Bible stories. So kids, somebody tell me one of the Bible stories we learned. Who have we learned about? Who? John 3.16. What does John 3.16 say? All of you, what does it say? What did he do? 
Send it again. What happened on the second time? What happened, Landry? It came back with a little twig in his mouth. And he knew there was a little bit of something sticking out of the water, right? A third time he sent the bird out. What happened to y'all? Did it come back? No. What did that mean? There was land. There was dry ground. Good job. Let's see. That's Moses. That's Noah. Who else did we talk about? Who else, Josie? Who? Zacchaeus. What happened with Zacchaeus? Don't laugh. What happened with Zacchaeus? Hiding in the tree. What did Jesus say? Get down here. I'm eating in your house tonight. Order pizza hut, right? I'm going to your house tonight. And he taught us that it doesn't matter what kind of sinner you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus will come to you any time you need him. Right? Doesn't matter. Who else did we talk about? I might have to walk in the middle Who else? Yes, I see your hand. Weston. Jonah. What happened with Jonah? He got eaten by a fish. He got eaten by a fish. A little goldfish? What kind? A big old whale. And how long did he stay in that whale's belly? Three days. And what happened? Y'all remember the sound we made on three? Are you ready? One, two, three. Throw it up. And he lands on the seashore. See, don't you wish you were a chair horse all the time? He lands on the seashore and he says, you know what, God? Maybe I didn't want to go to the Maybe I didn't want to do what you told me to do. But now I'm going to do what you told me to do. I will do exactly what you told me to do. Let me wash the fish cuts off first. And then I'm going to do whatever you told me to do. All right? Okay? Then we talked about some things with Jesus. Boom. And Chris, we did talk about David and Goliath. What happened with David and Goliath? So, uh, he, he was a, he was a giant and then, uh. David was a giant? No. Oh. Oh, Goliath was a giant. Okay. Where did he hit him? Boom! <laughs> Good job, Owen. All right, boom! At, at Christmas time, whose birth do we talk about? Jesus. Who, who did we talk about? Jesus. Jesus. And who came to see him? In the manger, who came later to see him and brought him gifts? Three wise men. Remember, three wise men? That's right. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And after two years, they had to flee. Why did they have to flee? Who was after them? Do you remember? Joseph and Mary. He coming after them, right? And they were going to get rid of all the babies two years and under. So they pick them up and they leave, right? And then they go to safety. Then at Easter. Wait, no, how was Jesus when he went to the temple? Do you remember? When he was teaching, the parents lost him for three days. So see, don't feel bad, parents. See, Jesus' the parents lost him. What? He was, he was in the church. He was 12. He was in the church. That's when they found him teaching. He said, I must be in my father's house. So then we fast forward and then Easter. At Easter, I, I was going to play a video. I just got to give y'all a replay. So I, I see two of my folks here, I think. So Owen, were you the donkey? Come on down. Come on down. Weston, my Jesus. Come on. So at Easter, we begin with Palm Sunday, and the kids all wave their palms. He's coming. Your donkey's coming. Your, your donkey that was here is not here. So, oh, what a donkey. What a donkey. Okay. Okay. So on Palm Sunday, all the kids do, and they wave their palm branches, and they shout at what? Hosanna! Hosanna! Right? Huh? Oh. And then we talked about the Monday Thursday Supper, and, and they the kids got up here and they do a lot of acting out. So they went over there to the Garden of Gethsemane, and what did the disciples do while Jesus prayed? Serenity, it's okay. Who did they do? Did they fall asleep? They fell asleep while Jesus prayed. And so then they come back and they come to a rest. Where was my soldier? I think somebody needs a soldier. Where is Judas? Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. And then Judas, Judas comes and kisses Jesus, right? Okay, so then we talk about...
about Good Friday and what happened on Good Friday. And as they lined the streets again, the same crowd, what did they scream about Jesus that day? Crucify him. Kill him. Right? Kill him. Okay. So, but we we did Palm Sunday. I say this to the end because I really don't know what you're going to do. And so I held this to the end. So the children got down. We had a donkey who got down. So kids, if you're on an aisle, step out so you can shout Hosanna. Step out. Show them how you did it. You're going to ride on him. Oh, yeah, you're going to ride on him. Okay. But remember, donkeys are peaceful animals. They are not bonking bronks. Okay? Okay. Turn around. All right. And as he rolls for the first time, you're going to yell, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. All right. Get ready. Uh, Weston, hold on. Okay. All right. You ready? And what are y'all going to shout this time on Good Friday? <laughs> so, okay, good job, kids. Y'all can say that. Good job. Wait, not you. Not you. You can go. Thank you. Okay. So, both times on Tuesday and Thursday. And the kids were so much more uh, animated in there. Y'all, y'all must make them pretty quiet because they're pretty quiet today. So, after the Tuesday group did it, and then I'm just fixing your hat. And after the Thursday group did it, here, come on, stitch. So, people can see. So after they did it, I brought Jesus up here and he had a pretend crown of thorns on. He had a pretend purple. He had a, did you? You don't remember the crown? Oh, I'm glad I didn't do the real ones. Okay. And so as I put my hand on him to talk like this, their heart was just beating. And we talked about what Jesus did for us and how it must have been for Jesus on that Friday as that they paraded him through town and people shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Right? Good job, Lizzie. Give it up for Jesus. So those are, and give it up for the donkey, of course. So I just want you all to know, I listened to a podcast not too long ago, and the person asked this speaker what they thought about the situation of the world, okay? And they said, you know, we have politics. I'm, I'm not talking on either side, so I'm not even going to tell y'all when this was to know what president, okay? But this person said, we have a terrible president, we have a terrible government, we have terrible senators, we have terrible leaders. The world is just going to, to you know where in a handbag. It's terrible. Where is the hope? And the lady in the podcast said, I want you to stop and pause and know that the hope is in you. The hope is in you. Only you can change the world. So, Jan, kids, one more time, stand up. I want you all to look around. This is the hope of the future right here. This is the hope of the future. And these kids, no, y'all can sit down. Good job. These kids are Jesus in the flesh and bone, y'all. They are the goodness of God that walk in front of us. And they know that no matter what their circumstances, we have kids that range from all circumstances. From needing to know that they're going to have water and clean clothes for the day to those who have everything they could ever want. And there's this wide spectrum. But every single one of them know Jesus loves them. And every single one of them know that no matter what their circumstances are, they've got a family and a church family that love them and will be there if they need them. And so I'm telling you, as this church body, we are here if you need us. We're here. Kids, y'all come up here. Let's finish off our praying together, okay?
breath. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Thank you for Jam. Thank you for Jam. Thank you for our parents. Thank you for our parents. And thank you for our school. Thank you for our school. Most of all, most of all, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Be with our friends.
guys, we do a repeat prayer, so you have to listen to what they're saying. 